In today's changing world, fast decisions need to be smart decisions. That's why Workday delivers quick insights to help your finance team plan for what's next. Workday, the finance, HR, and planning system for a changing world. Here's your money briefing for Tuesday, August 3rd. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. These are uncertain times for apartment renters. The federal eviction moratorium that kept many cash-strapped people in their homes during the pandemic expired over the weekend. And for those who have been able to make their monthly payments, they face rent prices that have risen more than 10 percent in the past year. Many landlords will continue to work with tenants, but there's no law that, that's really creating a situation where they have to do things like that. Coming up, we'll talk with our housing reporter, Will Parker, about what's driving rents higher, and we'll get an update on efforts to extend the eviction moratorium. That's after the break. In today's changing world, fast decisions need to be smart decisions. That's why Workday delivers quick insights to help your finance team plan for what's next. Workday, the finance, HR, and planning system for a changing world. Take a close look at your next rent bill. After the apartment rental market was hobbled by the pandemic, median rents are now more than 10 percent higher than a year ago, according to the home search website Apartment List. So what does that mean for renters who are still struggling financially? Our housing reporter Will Parker has been following the rental market and he's here with an update. Will, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, Will, we saw rents decline by, in some cases, double digit percentages during the pandemic. What's turning that around? So there are a few things that are going in the favor of of landlords right now. One is that there have been places where more jobs are being created, where younger people are going back to cities to to rent apartments, especially those who had, you know, gone home to live with parents. And you have a for sale housing market that is still on fire around most of the country. And for people who have, you know, higher incomes that would usually buy, a lot of them are having to rent. So these are some of the factors that are are really helping to push rents higher right now. And we keep hearing that people are moving out of cities in search of more space in suburban areas. Is that still having an effect on the rental business? Yeah, so during the pandemic, especially early on when there was, you know, little investment activity in the apartment business, one area that there, you did still see a lot of interest was in suburban areas and the idea that these areas outside of cities were becoming more popular with those leaving urban areas during the pandemic. And as, as well as smaller cities, uh, especially places in the South and Southwest uh, that we're seeing a lot of interest um, in, in apartments there, that's still happening. There's a question of how long the trend of, of money moving, investment moving to buildings and, and suburbs and, and the Sun Belt will, will keep going. But for, for now, that's, that's certainly uh, one of the major trends. Now, during the down market, some landlords started offering so-called sweeteners to potential renters. Is that still happening? It's happening less and less, uh, especially in large coastal cities where these deal sweeteners were the most common. So, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Earlier this year, you you were still seeing in New York uh, at, you know, fancy higher end rental buildings, things like three months free of rent. What a lot of these large apartment landlords that uh, were offering a lot of these sweeteners have been saying recently is that they've been winding down those deals as, you know, rents start to go back up, occupancy starts to go back up, and they they can start charging rents that are closer to what they were used to charging before the pandemic. Now, the eviction moratorium that was put in place early in the pandemic expired over the weekend, but there's some talk about it possibly being extended again. What's the latest on that? So what happened late last week is the White House said that the CDC, which had initially put the eviction moratorium in place, no longer had the authority to do it again, to extend it again. And they cited a Supreme Court ruling on the matter that threw the CDC's ability to do that into question. Um, you had Democrats and, and Congress who were now being told that it was up to them to to pass the extension. Some of those Democrats you know, disagreed with the White House's stance that they could not do it themselves. But ultimately, the lawmakers and Congress were not able to come up with an agreement in time for the eviction moratorium's expiration. And so it did expire this weekend. And the House of Representatives is on vacation right now. And it's not clear that at the national level, there's any kind of extension forthcoming. So with the moratorium suspended, what do we expect to see from landlords? Are they going to restart evictions or maybe start raising rates? 
Uh, well, that really depends. I mean, what what the moratorium ending does do for many landlords is give them a, the ability to replace tenants that have not been paying with people who can pay. So, you know, that will allow their collections to, to go up. Um, but as far as raising rents, it, it's it's kind of a gradual process. So, you know, re- what you can get for an apartment that's open uh, might be really high. But in order to get that higher rent for all of your apartments, uh, that has to happen with leases expiring. Uh, many landlords have tenants that are paying discounted rent because during the pandemic, tenants had a lot of leverage to, to ask for lower rates. Uh, you know, buildings were getting emptier, right? Um, landlords are having trouble keeping you know, more than 90% of their apartments full in some cases. So, so renters were able to negotiate lower rates. So landlords are not going to be able to realize these higher rents until some of those people who have these pandemic discounts reach the end of their current lease. You know, a lot of tenants who relied on eviction protection to get by are still struggling. Do they have any leverage now? With the eviction moratorium now expired, you know, a, a lot of tenants who, who relied on that to, to stay in their homes despite, you know, being behind on rent, they, you know, they don't have that sort of leverage with their landlord when it comes to negotiating things like, you know, perhaps a payment plan or, you know, some sort of agreement that would give them more time to pay rent. Many landlords will will still do that and continue to work with tenants, but there's no there's no law that that's really creating a situation where they have to do things like that. So now, you know, what we may see is an increase in in evictions uh, on tenants who have not been able to make their full rent payments. Now, the federal eviction moratorium has gotten much of the spotlight, but what's the status of other renter protections put in place, you know, by state or local governments? So there there are really only a handful of of states that have their own eviction moratorium. Now that the federal one has expired, there's California, New York, Illinois has some protections. Um, And and you've seen a, a few Local governments, cities do do their own as well. Um, over the weekend, DeKalb County, which is a part of Greater Atlanta and Georgia, uh, you know, did a 60-day extension of the moratorium. But for the most part, um, you know, those those are the exception. Uh, most local governments do not have eviction protections that are equivalent to what the CDC had been providing. So, with the moratorium expired, let's say a tenant is evicted, but then the moratorium is restored. Would that tenant have any recourse in that case? Yeah, if the moratorium is extended in the next few days, that would put most of the tenants who you know are behind on rent um, and who had been protected by the CDC moratorium, that would put most of them back in the situation they were before the expiration. Um, it's possible that you know with a week or two weeks in between, there are, there are people that would fall between the cracks and you would see momentarily a, a big increase in evictions before. Uh, you know, an extension, however late, would kind of put us back in the same situation we were in up until the end of July. All right, that's WSJ housing reporter Will Parker. Will, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal.